It seems impossible to say or do anything in this day and age without offending someone. This is all thanks to woke culture. But where do we draw the line between sensitivity and censorship? Woke culture has made it taboo to speak about certain issues, and Dr. Phil has had enough of the woke agenda. Should be like a town square, right? Mm -hmm. You should be able to talk about whatever you want to talk about and have an exchange of ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. It doesn't work that way. Uh, when you put out something that is at odds with the agenda, the agenda is intolerant. And he is right. The woke agenda is not about open dialogue, but silencing dissent. When you disagree with anything the agenda says, you are labeled as an enemy. Dr. Phil has had enough of it, and he is ripping woke culture apart. Woke people always result to bullying whenever someone says anything they do not agree with. Dr. Phil was on Joe Rogan's podcast, and they talked about how dirty it gets when woke people start their trolling and bullying. You know, you see somebody that says something on Twitter or says something in an interview that is offensive to some group, and all of a sudden you start reading the messages they get. It's like, I hope you get ass cancer and die, you son of a bitch. I'll cut your throat. I'll come to your house and kill your children. Are you kidding me? It's pretty insensitive what woke people put their victims through while pretending to be on a moral high ground. Dr. Phil isn't buying it, and he talked about how the media is rewarding woke culture for bad behavior. He's voiced concerns that Hollywood and other media outlets have become echo chambers, where only progressive voices are allowed to speak. I, I just said, I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna start talking about the social issues along with everything else, because if you, if you even took psychology in, in high school, or you took Psych 101, one of the first fundamental principles you learned was you don't reward bad behavior. Like when woke people get offended by the phrase pregnant women because men that have transitioned to women cannot get pregnant. The media rewards wokeism by pushing their arguments. But the one thing that Dr. Phil has refused to tolerate is sex change for children. Listen to what is done to kids. Sex change operations and uh, hormonal treatments that some of these chemicals are what they use to chemically castrate uh, chronic pedophiles in prison. Uh, and they're giving them to uh, early teens to, uh, to arrest their development. You see, those choices change the trajectory of a child's life permanently. Most of us get embarrassed when we remember the things we wanted to do as teenagers. Imagine if those choices were permanent. Dr. Phil has raised concerns about what he sees as a rush to push gender identity changes on young people who are still developing emotionally and psychologically. And how comes it's only in recent years that more people have wanted to change their gender? May it be because wokeism is influencing people. Dr. Phil believes that people are being influenced by trendy woke ideas. I think there is a social contagion effect. So people jump on the bandwagon and if it's for a short period of time, but they've done things that can't be reversed, I think that's really tragic. It is tragic. Some trans people have already expressed how much they regret transitioning. Dr. Phil maintains that his stance is not about rejecting anyone's identity, but rather advocating for cautious, informed decision-making when it comes to life-altering changes. Over the past few years, cancel culture has gained immense power, especially on social media, where individuals are often canceled for saying or doing things that are considered offensive or out of line with progressive values. You say something I don't like, and we will attack you, we will cancel you, we will get you fired, we will get you labeled as a hater, we will get you labeled as phobic, uh, whatever. Dr. Phil has been one of the most vocal critics of cancel culture. Innocent people have gotten their names tarnished and businesses destroyed because of being canceled. Just saying something that someone else doesn't like is enough to get you out of your career. And it could be something you tweeted 10 years ago too. It's become a dangerous tool for silencing people, punishing people based on a single tweet or comment without giving them the opportunity to explain or apologize is not fair. You know, when people start assassinating character, it's because their ideas won't withstand challenge. This cancel culture bullshit, cancel culture should be council culture. If you say something that's offensive to my values, 
I should counsel with you about it. Not cancel you, not get everybody to hate you. Woke people are also not protected from cancel culture too, because there is always a new ideology that could label them as an enemy. Cancel culture fosters an environment of fear, where people are too scared to express opinions that might be controversial or counter to the prevailing narrative. The world needs more ideas if we are to develop further, but if people are too scared to express ideas, they will just end up frustrated. The woke movement now has woke police everywhere, waiting to cancel anyone who says anything they don't like. And it's not the government that's trying to muzzle us. We're doing it to each other. Right. That's the cancel culture. Mm -hmm. We've got three times as many people afraid to express their opinions now yep. than we had in 1950. Imagine that, a society where people are scared to express their opinions. Dr. Phil believes that in a democratic society, people should be able to express a wide range of opinions, even if those opinions are unpopular or offensive to some. The problem with cancel culture, in his view, is that it doesn't allow for conversation or learning. Instead, it pushes people out of the public community for making mistakes. Sometimes those mistakes were made years ago in entirely different social contexts. Uh, they've been trying to cancel me for before cancel was even cool. Uh, before cancel was a word. But I just keep showing up, yeah. you know? Yes. And for that, Dr. Phil has been a great example of resilience and an advocate for free speech. Cancel culture often overreaches, punishing people in ways that can ruin their careers or lives for relatively minor mistakes. To him, cancel culture is not about justice. It's about control and censorship. And talking about censorship, there are a bunch of words and phrases that have been canceled. I, I put together a list of things that just drive me crazy. You can't say peanut gallery. Are we offending peanuts? <laughs> when you're talking about a car, you can't say, well, it's got a blind spot because that offends people that are unsighted. I thought they were blind. I'm pretty sure they know they're blind <laughs> because they can't see. If you ever say those words in the presence of woke people, be ready for some confrontation. On the other hand, woke Hollywood has largely embraced cancel culture, and woke culture has also affected how they produce movies. Gone are the days when shows were just for entertainment. Now movies have to promote woke ideas, and it takes away the entertainment, which is the only reason why people watch shows. I love this country enough to acknowledge that we've got problems. Right. I'm not so defensive about it. I, I, I saw a couple of universities are using trigger warnings for Romeo and Juliet, where they say, trigger warning, suicide content. Well, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> 